All right, so the gravy train derailed today. Uh, I got the engine in. Um, as you can see, I kind of put my, the hardest header to put in on this car is on the passenger side. And keep in mind, like I mentioned in the other video, these are from a GM A body. Uh, they were actually in this car. Uh, so they're the headers I used to have on the Cutlass um, with an Oldsmobile engine. And they actually clear pretty damn nice. Right now they're obviously loose, but um, even with them hanging low, we got clearance all around. Um, you see that sweet GM corporate blue on there? I love it. Um, but right now I still have the cherry picker holding up the engine. Um, I fucked up. When I was welding up my cross member and talking to you guys, I went ape shit on the one side where it was two pieces of angle iron. Well, I did that for a reason, and I completely fucking forgot about it. So I'll explain better. I'll go down there, but I'll show you on the passenger side. On the passenger side, you could see where, obviously right now, my cross member is floating, and I hope my camera is straight enough to show you guys, but you could see it's floating in there. Well, this piece of angle iron is supposed to go like in here. Or like this, all right. I wish I could show you this better because I'm doing this solo. But you can see where I could put this in there like that and weld it, which is what I'm going to do because the bolts. When I put that piece of angle iron across the uh, cross member, I didn't take into consideration that in those open voids between that horseshoe shape, there was bolts that stuck through, all right, like here. So if you can imagine, this goes to the frame, and my cross member is supposed to drop in. Well, now that I've widened that footprint where it bolts, guess what? This bolt got in the way. But this is simple. I'm going to take this same piece. I'm just going to weld it to the frame because at that point, it doesn't matter. Um, you can also see how well the uh, headers line up with the, uh, with the cross member. Like I had mentioned in the other video the reference point for the headers is the center of the transmission I don't worry I have the cherry picker still holding up the transmission I just got a block of wood to wedge it to alleviate the load but you can see the headers line up very nice on the opening and now I'll go on to the other side and I'll show you guys where I fucked up and it's alright uh, one of the things I learned working in the collision repair industry that was taught to me by person I currently work for, and I had to kind of embrace that because I used to be a nervous wreck about doing things, is uh, it's just metal, man. If you fuck up, you can just cut it out. So here, you could see, and this is where I was talking about where this frame isn't really like symmetrical. It's kind of odd. So you could see, even though my cross member is sitting straight, this boxed section here goes up to the, um, up to like just the beginning of the angle iron piece that I welded into the um, cross member. And on that side, the angle iron is covering an entire box section. That box section of the frame is extended. And the reason for that is because the Nike Swish cross member is offset. So it swoops around. So one side of the frame on the inside is longer to compensate for the exhaust hoop um, in it, if that makes sense. So either way, let me get in here a little bit better. So I had two pieces of angle iron. One went in here with the back wall facing this way. So the open end of the angle iron was facing the outside of the car. I slid it in here, I bolted it down. And then I slid another piece of angle iron back to back so that this had a ledge to ride to that was bolted. Well, guess what I did, guys? So, the fact that those were open, that was a design I incorporated into it and I forgot. These were offset for a reason. These two were designed to slide in between the frame. So, when I would slide this in here, it's supposed to slide in between the frame and sandwich itself so that it would have some rigidness. Well, I fucked that up real good because I welded it all up 
And I should have crawled under here and took taken a better look, but ultimately, this is the nature of the beast. Things happen, and it's angle iron. It's cheap enough. In the morning, I'm going to go buy some uh, angle iron. And if all else fails, I still got that scrap metal I can cut up, which is no big deal. So, again, I'm going to run a piece of angle iron in here through the frame. Bolt it in here and here and probably a little bit forward. And then I'm going to go ahead and weld it anyway. Uh, even after I bolt it in, it's going to get welded just for extra strength. And then the opposite side of the angle iron is also going to get welded to the other piece of angle iron. So this is going to be real nice and rigid for the cross member to sit on. So I get a really like nasty glare from the uh, camera. The, the undercoating almost looks like grease at the front. But this is uh, just gloss paint. Uh, that's the cross member I cleaned up. It already got beat up on the, on the install. Uh, but... You can see where I fucked that up really good. And it's not really a big deal. It's not a major, major fuck up, but I should have known better. I just didn't want to jack the car up and crawl underneath. And because of my laziness, uh, now I got to you know kill a little bit of time. But ultimately, the fact that I have to redo this is uh, kind of nice because I'm actually re-engineering the entire setup uh, and I'm going to weld it in. And it'll be really nice and, and solid and sturdy and, you know, it'll be better. Now I got the car in the air. The cross members, you know, I got this wedged up, but I still got the cherry picker hooked up. Um, it'll be easy to do this. There's, I got this completely hitting the floor, the trans at least hitting the floor. Uh, so I got wiggle room. And the goal is to keep it even with this ledge because that side was pretty much the same. Um, you know, but obviously we got, we got things to figure out here still, but, um, you know, it's not a major thing. It's small. Um, I'm going to go pick up some tools in the morning from work. I'm going to need my grinders, my cutoff wheels, and then I'll probably take a trip to the farm and fleet and pick up some angle iron. And, uh, I, I need to find like 120 wall because the, uh, the MIG welder when I do, um, a lot of welds it starts to get you know it it heat it it cycle duty is only so much so it, the thicker the material the longer it needs in between welding so i'm gonna go pick up some angle iron tomorrow weld it all out and knock it all out and bolt this bitch in and the car can pretty much stay on jack stands at this point because uh uh there's other things i need to do um but it's in it looks good and uh. I got like old man grunts going over here. But yeah, you can see engine looks great in there. Um, I can start kind of buttoning it up. I am going to have to re kind of engineer my exhaust because of the fact that I put in longer tubed headers. Um, my old headers I had cut to make them work with the original cross member. Uh, since I'm using an A body cross member, I can use these, these header collectors are a lot longer than a lot of the header collectors out there. Um, they're much like the ones on my cutlass. You can see how long the primaries are. Uh, and yeah, so it pretty much goes all the way up to the cross member. Um, and these, and the same thing, because uh, like I said, everything uh, is referenced from the trends. So, that's it for the day. I'm happy the engine's in. Uh, obviously, I did other things out here, not just this, but for now, we're good. And I'm going to call it done. I'll hit it tomorrow. Okay, guys. Theme for today is know your obstacles. So, in the earlier section of this video, I mentioned that I fucked up because of the way that I had the angle iron set up to support the cross member, which it's good because at least now I, I went in and I walled it in the brackets. Or in angle iron, but they are brackets ultimately. So, as you can see, I got that welded in. It wasn't too bad. Welding underneath was fucking hard, but it's, it's welded. 
uh, compared to up top yeah big difference um, you know with this thickness of material I am pushing this welder to its limits and uh, speed and heat are crucial to welding you know above head like I was and I keep I kept getting um, I had to lower the voltage down to not get slagged to keep falling into the nozzle and it was just really tricky to get it dialed in but ultimately it was done now this side I ground down and there's a reason for that and the welds weren't horrible but so you can see we got a little bit of an angle but here's the kicker when I measure this cross member from here down same on that side we're exactly 16 inches from this to the ground car's pretty level I put a level up top and the ground's pretty flat so that's actually pretty good we're, we're really close but as you can see I have too much flat surface holding weight going outward and it's starting to belly down a little bit which is no big deal for now I mean this is ultimately better than what I had on there with two pieces of angle iron bolted in there I can only imagine how much flex that setup had so either way what I'm gonna end up doing is I'm gonna end up adding a gusset from this piece of angle iron to the box section of the frame and then I have some leftover material from when we box the frame and I'm gonna flat plate from the frame to the very edge of this flat stock that I had to add to the one piece of angle iron because it wasn't sufficiently long enough um, again this is something that I'm gonna take care of God that looks you see this is why I hate like brushed on products not to get off subject but you could see the streak marks from that rust encapsulator and I ended up using like a gloss paint and you can really see the streaks it kind of pisses me off but Ain't nobody gonna worry about that. So either way, um, I'm gonna end up putting a piece of flat steel from the frame to this edge. And then obviously we're gonna add our gusset and this thing should be happy. Uh, when I do that, hopefully I can take this into work and do it on the lift because working on the ground, welding overhead, really fucking sucks. You got limited position with your gun nozzle. Keep in mind that my distance from the floor I only have a couple of inches of wiggle room between the gun nozzle and uh, the floor so I really got limited mobility there and it really made it hard but ultimately our cross member is in place that side came out good that's rigid I'm not worried about that at all uh, this side needs just a little bit more TLC but for now we can button it up and uh, as you can see we're still offset but I'm gonna end up bolting this in the center of the cross member so we're going to be pretty good. Um, but yeah, either way, uh, I had to grind that down. And I'm going to just put a flat piece of plate across here. And it's going to be like welded across here, welded across here. And then I'm going to do a series of plug welds on everything it overlaps. So it's going to have like two plug welds here, like three plug welds here, and four plug welds here. Because this kind of tapered in. Uh, by the time I measured everything down, that's what I ended up doing. So uh, it's going to be plated, plug welded, gusseted, a little bit of overkill, but I really want this to be rigid. That side's pretty rigid. Now keep in mind, when you accelerate, the transmission pulls up. So really, we're pretty good, but I just need a strut there, which is going to be like our gusset. It's going to act like a strut to keep this from moving up and down. And then obviously with the plate, it's going to be better reinforced. And I, I really, I really rather go overkill. Um, obviously before my bolt setup worked out good and nothing happened, we raced it. I beat the crap out of it. Nothing ever happened. But um, this is the time where if you want to go overkill, go for it. So my work is done for the weekend. Car kind of fought me today I ran out of welding wire uh, again pushing this welder kind of to its work limits uh, made it tricky um, and I absolutely cannot thank my best bud Ryan for letting me uh, borrow his welder keep in mind I mentioned in other videos I was ready to buy a welder I had that cash burning a hole in my fucking pocket and then you know a couple weeks later this whole coronavirus thing really unfolded and I'm really grateful for that because you know what that money still kind of stashed away and I never I never touched it um, so I'm really thankful for for that because obviously the way things are going 
Uh, we don't know what what's going to unfold, and I got a couple parts that I'm going to buy, and that hopefully that that buttons everything up. I need a water pump, master cylinder, uh, and brake booster, header gaskets, and I'm going to end up redoing the wiring for the harness and just cleaning it up, saving what's there. I cut some of the uh, casing material off. The wires aren't corroded, so I'm just going to have to roll with it because to rewire the harness the way I wanted to, I was going to spend about 150 to color code and keep that factory color coding, but all fresh wires, and I really, I really just can't swing it right now. Um, the couple of parts that I need to buy there aren't very expensive. Um, and then the most expensive thing, which is going to be the last thing, will be I have to have a drive shaft made. Or have that one cut if it still balances out because right now um, the that 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 drive shaft that was in there is what was fucking fucking up my transmission. So yeah, guys, I'm excited that the engine's in and then I can start doing a couple things here and there and getting it buttoned up. And I still got time. I intended to have this car rolling on the road by mid May, uh, so that should leave me plenty of wiggle room to trickle out the small expenditures that I got here. Um, so uh, I'm trying to be uh, uh, money smart and uh, not spend a lot, not knowing what lies ahead for all of us. This whole thing is, uh, isn't going to get any better anytime soon. So we have to, I, I'm lucky that I'm still able to come out here, but on, in the same token, um, you know, I have to think ahead. Uh, I haven't really spent a whole lot of money. I, I think I spent 15 bucks this weekend on a spool of wire. Uh, that was really it. Um, and hopefully from here, uh, we can start chipping at it. I think there's enough there to work with and really complete it. If push comes to shove, you know, we'll have to leave some things, uh, contingent for later, uh, stuff like that. So, uh, hopefully you guys enjoyed it. I really wish I came out here and, and filmed a little bit more this weekend, but, uh, the goal was just to get the engine in and at least I made a cool like video to show you guys how to clean up your center lines. That that seems to be getting quite a few views in the last 12 hours. So I'll let you guys go.